my favorite things to do is to get out into nature and try to see some wildlife. And today we're here at Staunton State Park because it's a great spot to see some marmots. So come on, let's see what we can find. One of the really awesome things about our state parks are our park rangers. They're really awesome resources that know a lot about the land and the wildlife that live here. So hopefully we can meet a park ranger while we're on our walk today and ask him or her some questions about marmots. Oh, and look, here comes a park ranger. Let's ask him some questions. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. Who are you? Hi there, my name is Adam Bliss. I'm a ranger at Staunton State Park. Nice to meet you. So this is actually my first time at Staunton State Park. Do you mind telling me a little bit about it? So Staunton is the Colorado's newest state park. Uh, the land was donated in 1986 by the Staunton family and it only became a state park in 2013, open to the public. Uh, it's got 4,000 acres, about 30 miles of mixed use hiking, uh, horseback riding and biking trails, a couple ponds to fish at. Wow, I didn't know that about the park. What's something else that's really cool to do here in the park? One of my favorite things about this park is the Marmot Festival that we have every spring here at the park. So marmots are a type of ground squirrel. They're the largest member of the ground squirrel family get up to about 10, 11 pounds. This cute kind of rodent looking thing, pretty big, pretty chunky, kind of run around. Um, they eat mainly nuts and grass, um, sometimes bird eggs and some other stuff, but mainly herbivores. Um, and they hibernate for most of the winter. So from September, October to about April, May, uh, they're gonna be burrowed deep underground, uh, under rocks, uh, just down to the ground and the sides of the hills and that's how they survive the winter is by burrowing deep into the ground and then hibernating until it's warm enough for them to come out again. Oh yeah, hibernation! I know what that is! Hibernation is a seasonal state of inactivity in certain warm-blooded animals where an animal's heart rate, breathing, and body temperature drops. So marmots are the largest what are considered true hibernators. Uh, you've got other animals like bears and stuff that also hibernate. So I heard there are some adaptations that actually help marmots hibernate. An adaptation is a behavioral or physical characteristic that helps an animal survive in its environment. Do you mind telling me about those adaptations? What separates uh, marmots from these other animals is that marmots' body temperature actually drops to basically the ambient temperature of their burrow, uh, usually not about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is something that most other large animals don't do. So the ability to survive those cold body temperatures throughout the whole winter is one of the adaptations that they have that makes them able to hibernate for that long. Um, if you see marmots running around with grass and straw and stuff in their mouth, it's not to eat. It's to bring back to their burrow to nest in so that they can uh, all cuddle up there in that nest and uh, be able to keep enough body heat to survive the winter. But the other way that marmots survive that kind of long hibernation is through building up a fat store throughout the spring. So when you see them running around in the spring and summer, they're uh, collecting food and just eating it, stuffing their faces full so that they have enough fat reserves to uh, go underground and not come out again until it's warm enough for them in the spring. One of the reasons why we don't let folks have their dogs off leash here at Staunton is because marmots need all of that available time in the spring to build up their fat supply because that's how they survive all year. They don't come out and eat. They don't store food down there to eat later. They get so fat in the spring that they are able to live off that for the rest of the year while they're in their burrows. Oh, so since they have to eat a lot in order to get ready for hibernation, is it okay if I give them some of my food? So it's really not a good idea to feed any wildlife, uh, specifically for marmots because they really need that full store of fat to survive the winter and they are adapted to eating marmot food which is grass and nuts they're not adapted to eating people food so if you feed them that people food they're going to feel full but it's not actually going to help them build up that fat reservoir that they need to survive so they'll, they'll go into the winter thinking that they have the food they need to survive and they won't make it through the winter because they don't actually have that those nutrients that they need oh that's so interesting what's another fun fact about marmots so i think a, a really fun fact about marmots is the way that they are able to kind of look out for predators and stuff while they're foraging for their food. So normally when a group of marmots is out looking for food, there's one marmot that's specifically assigned to get up somewhere high and look out and kind of be the, the watchman for any kind of predators. And so if you hear their chirping noise, that really high pitched chirping, that's why it's, they're sometimes called whistle pigs because of that noise they make. That's actually the, uh, the lookout marmot that's alerting the other marmots that there's a threat nearby, which might just be you walking your dog. Um, but it could be a threat to them. So if you hear that kind of chirping noise, you'll look and you'll see them all start to scatter back into the burrows. Oh, thanks so much, Adam, for talking to me and teaching me all about Staunton State Park and marmots. No problem. Thank you guys so much for coming out today, and I hope you enjoyed the park. I learned so much about marmots after talking to Park Ranger Adam. 
Most importantly, I learned that not feeding marmots and keeping dogs on leash when hiking are important ways that we can help Colorado marmots. Conservation starts small.